I want to just share a little bit about this book, Convenience Store Woman. It's a novel and it's very short. It's about 170 pages long, but it's also like larger print and it's an easy read. It's pleasant to read and you're imagining what does this convenience store look like? It takes place in Japan. Originally, it was written in Japanese. It's translated into English here. You picture it like a convenience store that's in Japan, and yet if you don't know what that's going to look like, you're thinking in America, we have 7-Eleven, we have convenience stores that are connected to gas stations, and yet in this book, there's never any mention of a gas station being connected to the convenience store that I remember. So it's interesting when you're trying to imagine it. And also, it's about this main character. Her name is Keikao Furakura, and she is in her mid-30s. She's worked at this convenience store for something like 18 years, and she's part-time, and she's never had any romantic relationships all her life. And so as you're reading it, throughout the book, they're always mentioning how she's not normal, but she's acting normal. She's mimicking the voices and the tones of her managers she's had over the years, like all eight different managers or, or whatever. And she's dressing in a certain way, fashionable styles, like some of her coworkers or relatives, but she's not copying them to a T because she doesn't want it to be too strange. Like she's a stalker or something. So she's kind of copying them, but not exactly. And she's just acting normal. And this is where this word comes to mind, taboo, because a lot of these topics, if we get into it and, and, and if you want to get a, like a book club, this would be a good book to, to have for that because people can get through it. It's not a long book to read and you could just discuss it with a friend or a group of people and you could try to pinpoint who does this person remind you of? Does she remind you of yourself in some ways? Do you, does she remind you of a certain friend you have who's just never dating, never in a romantic relationship? Or in some ways, how is she different? And it goes to show you that we are also very different from each other, even though we're similar in some ways. And the taboo topic is like when you start talking about disabilities and disorders and sexuality, all these other things, it's very taboo in our society in a lot of ways. And and we live in a society that's very politically correct. And it's hard to just speak your mind and have an opinion. And and this is just a fictional character. But again and again in the book, it's always that she's not normal. And her sister's trying to cure her of whatever it is that's wrong with her. And yet there's no specific label. And she's given her excuses like, use this excuse when people ask you, how come you're not changing your career? How come you've been there for 18 years? How come you're never in a romantic relationship? Why are you only part-time? And it's kind of funny in one point, the excuse she keeps using is because she's weak, meaning like some type of physical ailment over the years. And then people say, yeah, but how could that be? Your job is kind of physical and you're on your feet all day and you're moving around and you seem very vibrant. And and so she's like, I need more excuses. So her sister's giving her more excuses to use. And she's just finding ways to just fit in to society and, and pretend to be normal. And if you think that's an interesting book, you should check it out. I came across it just by accident somewhere. I think it was like a dollar or two at a used book sale. And lastly, I want to say thank you very much to any new subscribers. It means a lot to me. I recently got a, a lot more subscribers than I had originally. I got a lot of views on a video I made about Ekankar, which is a spiritual path and religion. The video is called Palji because it's about a memoir about the modern founder of Ekankar, which is a religion and spiritual path. And so that's what that's about. I got a lot of views. It means a lot to me. Comments as well. And thank you also to the gentleman in Michigan who recently purchased a painting of mine. And we had a nice conversation and that means a lot to me as well. So I hope you'll join me again in the future and wishing you all the best.